Uh, day two with Marek filming. Let's see, so this morning I got my personal bank account set up here in China with China Merchant Bank. And uh, we'll have to do one of these uh, showing how to set up WeChat with the bank account and how that all works and stuff. And I'm excited to get that working. But I got my bank account set up. You don't have to be a citizen or resident or anything here. You can just come in and open a bank account. So we got that all set up. And then uh, I had a call this morning with a digital marketing conference down in Australia. It looks like I might be going down there in, in October to do a uh, speaking event and maybe a couple other events along with that. And then right now we're headed to a potential client meeting with a startup that is, I think, based in Hong Kong, but they've got some people here in Shenzhen, and so we're going to meet with their marketing team and talk with them. And then at 3 o'clock, we've got another meeting with somebody that I think is a potential client, but actually might be a potential hire or something. I'm not sure who they are or what they want from me, but I agreed to meet with them. And uh, we're going to get lunch in there somewhere. We're going to get something healthy. So that's pretty plan. much what's going on today. Hi, is this Sunny? Oh, hey Jim, Jimmy, yeah, this is Josh. Hey, we got here a little bit early, but uh, I'm not even sure if we're really in the right place or the right part of Coastal City, so. When I was growing up, like, my neighborhood was all white, and then this girl from Taiwan moved in when I was in third grade. And then by the time I graduated high school, my high school was like 70% Asian or 60% Asian. I mean, it was just, I was the minority. Are you familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? No. Anyway, he's this marketing guy, he's an entrepreneur, but just he films everything and he puts it out there. So I'm kind of trying to do similar stuff, but about China. I just want to film everything, stick everything on Instagram, YouTube, everywhere, promote Shenzhen, promote the startup scene, promote what we're doing in my business too. But also just promote all sorts of people who are doing stuff and making stuff happen in entrepreneurship. So, by the way, I told them we wouldn't film the actual meeting because no we probably no don't want to mention the company name or something uh -huh. or that. So this one is one where it kind of flows from the, the right to the left. If you want to have it flow from the bottom to the top, you could do that as well. And you'll see it's, it's pretty responsive. If you want to change the speed, you want to slow it down, and you just you slow it down real slow. <laughs> or if you want to make it really fast, you can do that as well. Um, but there's all sorts of effects that you can do. Um, the one that I like the best is the You could do all sorts of different scenes. So some of the default ones, we created one called Nemo. It kind of looks like a little fish from Nemo, so it's uh, a little bit fun. Um, but yeah, this this product, uh, this is really the focus point of what I wanted to chat with you guys about. Mm -hmm. About you know how do we actually create awareness around it, and how do we promote it and, and, and get it out onto the market. Paper performance should be this great thing where, oh, we only pay for the sales that we get. And in some industries, that works out really well. Uh -huh. And so what I've seen is that paper performance works out great when it's a predictable industry. Like it's something uh -huh. that it's kind of like a commodity or it's predictable. It can be systematized. Um, but when it's growth hacking, it's really hard to do pay for performance because you're paying people to figure something out. And if they spend 90% of their time figuring something out and then 10% actually generates the results, well, you're basically telling them, we're not gonna pay you for 90% of the work that you do. I'll get a salad, I'm getting a salad, I'm staying healthy. 
and maybe a kiwi parachute. Okay, the purple sweet potato milkshake. I'm sure it was really good for me, but not exactly a taste explosion. So let's go for another meeting. Yep. The way that I grew my business was through thought leadership and by becoming an influencer. And so I run this business doing digital marketing for years. And so I started writing about that. I started blogging about it, writing, doing PR, doing outreach, getting into these publications. <clears throat> and I didn't sell what I was doing when I was talking about this. I just told people how to do it themselves. So I was giving advice. So in your situation, I'd be, these might be like technical project managers, right? Who might find the software. So I might go out and I might start a blog in Chinese about project management and about Agile and about Scrum. And I'd become an expert on that. And I would just write about that all the time and create resources for it and help people who are project managers to do their jobs better. Not through your software, but by giving them advice, free advice, just give it away don't expect anything in return, but then you become the expert that everybody looks at and they say, oh, when I need to answer a question about Agile and I want to read it in Chinese, I go to Lei because he knows about all this stuff. He's the expert. He's got this website that's full of all sorts of great information. Once you become the expert, then people look at you and they say, well, who is this guy? Oh, he works with a software company that offers this software that I could use and I already like him and I trust him because I read all his content and I watch his videos and I listen to his podcast or whatever you do. And I now trust him, so I'm going to trust the software that he represents. And that's how you transfer your expertise, your expert knowledge into sales.